The opinions expressed in the video you are about to see are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Today we're testing the all-new 190 series from Yamaha. These are smaller entry-level boats that are intended to give the user the most bang for the buck. Both the SX190 and its sister, the AR190, are very similar with only cosmetic differences. Let's take a look. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. Both the AR190 and its twin sister without the water sports tower, the SX190, have a length overall of 19 feet 2 inches, a beam of 8 feet, and thanks to the jet drive, a draft of only 14 inches. But the most important feature of this SX190 is not that it's 19 feet, not that it's single engine, but that it is a single engine jet drive. I noticed the jet pump assembly isn't painted and there's a sacrificial zinc on the side, but it's an aluminum alloy and my experience has shown that that will significantly reduce any worries you might have about corrosion. Inside is a three bladed stainless steel impeller inside a 155 millimeter axial flow jet pump. For performance, we reached the top speed of 43.2 miles per hour with our single 1812cc engine running at 7400 RPM. At that speed, we were burning 11.9 gallons per hour and getting 3.65 miles per gallon for a range of 98 miles. Pulled back to our best cruise speed of 6000 RPM and we were running at 28.4 miles per hour. Now we were burning 6.3 gallons per hour and getting 4.5 miles per gallon for a range of 122 miles. Not surprisingly, we had a fast time to plane of 3.3 seconds and reached 30 miles per hour in 6.8 seconds. With the line of thrust so close to the bottom of the boat as opposed to being below the hull, we only had a roughly 5 degree bow rise so you won't lose any visibility when accelerating. Now for turning performance, the SX190 can only be described as brisk. If you turn the wheel hard over, you'll literally spin the boat around and then it'll take off in the other direction. However, when you're going in high cruise and do a slow turn, I did find that I bled off speed, but not RPM. We've got a very basic helm layout with only two gauges, speedometer and tachometer, but notice the tachometer has a digital multifunction gauge that lets you cycle through different parameters to get the information that you want. Sunscreen right up over the gauges, rocker switches with circuit breakers underneath. Way over on the right hand side, this is a great feature. No wake mode and cruise assist. When you're operating in no wake mode, just giving a couple of hits up or down allows you to add or subtract speed incrementally. When I'm in the seated position, my line of sight is just above the windshield frame, so I'm very happy to see that. And of course, with the flip up bolster, I'm above it all anyway. Your steering is directly related to the amount of thrust that you have coming out of the jet pump. So at low speed, you're going to have low steering ability. At the jet pump, we're in the neutral position right now, which is deflecting the thrust. As we come forward into the first detent, the thrust is still deflected downward, and that's a new feature from Yamaha. Our tests have shown that this gives you a little bit better low speed maneuverability. And of course, when you come fully forward, there's no deflection at all. Of course, I wondered how the single engine jet drive would handle towing, so I found myself a wakeboarder and started towing him from the AR190. As it turned out, it was a pleasure for both me and the boarder. I was able to keep a straight track as he crossed back and forth across the wake, and I only had to make minute corrections to the speed as I turned at the end of the runs. And at roughly 18 miles per hour, the 190 kicked up enough wake to keep everyone happy. Now let's take a look at the features. The main difference between the SX190 and the AR190 is the addition of the collapsible wakeboard tower on the AR version. I like the molded in contour line that breaks up what would otherwise be dull top sides. And as I come to the stern, you can clearly see that the top sides are flared out, which allows Yamaha to maximize the interior cockpit space. One of the first things that impresses me for this size boat, how much room there is up in the bow. Between the two seats, it goes from 19 and a half inches, moving back to 18 inches. For storage, underneath both sides, very deep cavernous storage. This one goes all the way back into this compartment, so you can store skis here if you really wanted to. Something you rarely will see in a 19-foot boat is dedicated anchor storage, and notice it's even got a spot to lock the anchor in place. If you're lounging out, not very cramped at all, you have to love the safety feature. 13 inches of height to keep you secure, and a conveniently located grab handle. Now look at this, between the two consoles, 20 inches. I've seen this as low as 16 inches on a 19-foot boat. The captain gets a wraparound bucket seat, open in the back for improved ventilation, flip-up bolster, it slides and swivels. In the cockpit itself, J seating with plenty of storage underneath, 
When you're watching the person at the end of the tow line, you're not going to be sitting back and facing because you've got the windshield frame and frankly no cushioning. So you'll be sitting sideways, hanging on to the forward grab rail and keeping an eye on the line while you're facing this way. This J seating that you see here is very unusual in a 19 foot boat, mostly because there's no engine box here. You're able to sit all the way across. The only way that Yamaha is able to do that is with their low-profile engines, in this case, an 1812cc four-stroke, four-cylinder, high-output, marinized Yamaha engine. I'd like to see this cushion be removable to access a non-skid step to allow you to get to the aft patio. This is always the most popular spot in every Yamaha boat, and it's pretty much a trademark feature on their boats. Nine inches separates the upper and lower platform, rubber non-skid matting on the upper platform, molded non-skid on the lower. And notice how the lower platform is so close to the water. This makes a great staging area for putting your gear on when you're into the water sports. There's a three-step reboarding ladder and two grab handles to assist you in getting out of the water. Drink holders in each corner. Opening up the hatch gives you access to a clean-out port. The clean-out port is a great feature. Just reach in, pull out the cover, and now you have access to the impeller. Because this is a water sports platform, you've got two tow points, one at the transom and one up on the wakeboard tower. And we're happy to see that Yamaha went with a collapsible tower on the AR190. No wake mode, cruise assist, tilt steering wheel, snap-in carpet, stereo, wakeboard tower, bimini top. You're probably wondering which of these features are optional. On this boat, none of them. Everything I have shown you is all standard, including the painted trailer. That's our look at the 190 series boats from Yamaha. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.